Praise the Lord. I welcome you to a Thursday Miracle Revival Hour. And I pray and I believe it's going to be a wonderful, unforgettable time for you. As we talk about faith tonight, and even though we've heard about faith quite a number of times, I know this new approach and this new exploration into the life of faith and into the praying by faith is going to be a tremendous revelation for you as it has been for me. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you at this time and bless your name. We glorify you because we know you are a great and mighty God, a covenant-keeping God, a God that never forgets what he has said to his children. And every time we call upon you, you fulfill your word to the letter, to the details in every life. And I'm asking tonight that, Lord, everyone without exception, the man and the woman, the brother and the sister, the mother and the father, and the children, the boy and the girl, Lord, I pray tonight will make connection and the quietness of our room, in the quietness of our house, in the quietness of our fellowship, anywhere we are. Tonight will be a time of turning around in every life in Jesus' name. Confirm your word, confirm your promise in the life of everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're looking at Psalm 56, and I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 56, we're looking at verse 3. In Psalm 56, verse 3, look at this, it says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Here is what the psalmist is saying. The psalmist is saying, there are times in life that fear may come. There are times in life that one may panic. There are times in life that what is happening in our community, what is happening in the nation, what is happening on the battlefield may try to strike fear into the heart of the man or the woman of anyone. And it says, I've made up my mind. I know there's a God in heaven. And I know that God, because he had sung earlier, he had said, the Lord is my shepherd. He had said earlier, the Lord is my strength. He had said earlier that I'm going to dwell in his uh, temple, in his sanctuary, in his house forever. And now he says, before that time, that's before the rapture for us, before that time, before the resurrection for us, before that time, before the second coming of the Lord for us, between now and then. He said, if anything so happens that makes me afraid, he said, I will trust in thee. I will trust in God. You are wondering what could happen that will make a man like David afraid. What will happen that will make a believer, a child of God, a minister, a member of the body of Christ, a person that knows the Lord and loves the Lord and has been going on in the Lord, what can make such a person afraid? You know, when the Philistines threaten, and when the Pharaoh and the Egyptians, when they are coming from behind, and there is a river, the Red Sea in front, a person could be afraid. Like the children of Israel were afraid when they saw that the chariots of Pharaoh, they were coming. But it says, when I am afraid like that, I will trust in God. You know, when plagues spread nationwide, like sometimes it happened in the lives of the children of Israel, they were going through the wilderness and they were going to the promised land and the plague just came and spread over everyone and people were dying. It at a time like that, anybody could be afraid and it says, when I am afraid. And I see all the plague that is devastating the land. He said, I will trust in thee. I will trust in the Lord. When dangers increase on every hand, 
on this hand danger, on that hand danger. That's why the psalmist said later, he said that even though I see 1,000 on the one hand and they are falling, and I see 10,000 on the other side and they are falling, you know, he says, at such a time, I know it will not get near me because I will trust in the Lord. When invisible uh, powers prevail over mighty and great people and the highest people. The people who can say came out they were, that they were invulnerable, that nothing could touch their lives when we see that those mighty people are falling. And when mysterious things are happening, that the people, the mighty and the great people, they say, we do not know what to do. Like Joshua said, he said, when things happen, I don't understand. When things happen and we do not know what we are going to do, he says, at that time, I will trust in the Lord when calamities strike, when calamities strike, uh, tri rise, and these calamities overwhelm a lot of people. Communities are overwhelmed, and the nations are overwhelmed, and tribes are overwhelmed, and people are overwhelmed everywhere. He says, at such a time, I will trust in the Lord. Today, tonight, I'm talking to you on in times like this, have faith in God. That's all we need. There will be problems in life. In times like that, have faith in God. Sometimes there will be sickness in life. In times like that, trust the Lord, have faith in God. Sometimes you don't have enough to eat. You don't have enough. You're going to depend upon. In times like that, I will trust in thee. In times like this, in times like that, you will have faith in God. Uh, those words have faith in God. Look at uh, Mark. I'm reading from chapter 11, verse 22. Mark chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 22. Here is what Jesus Christ himself said. And Jesus answering, and Jesus answering. Picture Jesus by your side while you are thinking about this problem, about this pandemic, about this epidemic, about this sickness, about this weakness, about the condition of your wife, about the condition of your husband, about the condition of any of your children, about somebody you care about in the hospital, about somebody you care about overseas, you can't reach them, and yet there are problems and challenges. Think about Jesus, visualize Jesus standing by your side and Jesus answering you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your aspiration. He knows your predicament. He knows everything you are thinking about. And Jesus whispering to you. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He said, Solutions are there. Solutions are near. Have faith in God. It says the power of darkness will be cancelled in your life. It says have faith in God. It says all the provision you need, everything will be supplied. Have faith in God. It says your desires will be fulfilled and your petitions will be fulfilled and your prayers will be answered. Have faith in God. It says if you just have faith in God, all things are possible. To him, all things are possible to us. All things are possible in your family right there. As you have faith in God. Remember once again, in times like this. In times like this. Have faith in God. That's what we are talking about today. There are three things we are looking at. Number one, an exploration of quickening faith. An exploration of quickening faith. Uh, what, I, what do we mean by exploration? I want to explore with you what we are talking about, faith, faith in God, the faith that quickens you, the faith that quietens all your fears, and the faith that quenches all the darts of the wicked one. In, the, in the moments like this, we need to explore what is faith. Erroneously, some people have said, I don't just have uh, any faith. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. And when I explain to you from the Word of God, you'll see that you have faith and that faith will be activated and that faith will work. I'm telling you, that condition will not persist. 
that condition will not remain. You are going to be all right. In fact, I can tell you right now, as you have faith in God, I have faith in God, and we bring our faith together in God. If two of us shall agree as touching anything, you can do that. You can agree with me. You can agree with me when I say your problems are solved. You can agree with me when I say the pain is gone. You can agree with me. And as two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask him, it will be done. In your life, it will be done. I rejoice with you. Number one is an exploration of quickening of faith. Number two is the exploits of quiet faith. Have you ever heard about that quiet faith? A faith that does not shout, a faith that does not cry, a faith that does not sigh, a faith that does not, you know, climb a mountain and jump down here, jump down there, a faith that is just quiet, like a quiet flowing river. And yet that faith is working. Number three, our expectation with quality faith. Quality faith, not, uh, you know, second, second-hand faith or second-rate faith. It's not a kind of faith that is not really what it ought to be. This is quality faith. And that's the faith I have tonight. That's the faith you have tonight. That's the faith that brings expectation to realization in your life tonight. Let's come back to point number one. Point number one, an exploration of quickening faith. I'm thinking about, uh, you know, the faith. We're looking at faith, and we're going to explore What's faith? How is faith recognized? How is faith described? What's the demonstration of faith? How does that faith work in your life? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 12. It says that she be not slothful, but followers, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Through faith and patience will inherit the promises. That means that once you put the faith into work, and once you put it into action, look at verse 18 there. In verse 18 of that same chapter, it says in verse 18, it says that by two immutable things, by two unchangeable things, in the which it was impossible for God to lie. You see that? Impossible for God to lie. Impossible. Impossible. It's not in its nature. From past eternity unto the uh, final, unto the future eternity, there is something you will never find in God that's lying. When he makes a promise, that's true. When he gives a, pro a prophecy, that is true. When he makes a pronouncement, a proclamation, that is true. He says, we're coming to put our trust. We're coming to put our faith in the God that finds it impossible to lie. That we might have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. There is a hope that is set before you. And how do I describe faith there? Faith is trusting in God who cannot lie. Faith is trusting in God who cannot lie. You know that. You know that. You know God cannot lie. And you trust him. And you lean on him. And you say, because I know he cannot lie, therefore I put my trust absolutely 100% on him. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 23. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23, this gives us another perspective for faith. It says, let us hold fast. Look at that. Let us hold fast. Once you hold something, look at her little boy there, uh, that toddler. When she holds or when he, when he holds, that toy will not let go. Even when that child is sleeping, he's still holding the toy. And you cannot take that toy from that child without some cry. It says, let us hold fast in such a way. The profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise. Why do I hold fast? Why do you hold fast to the promise he has given? Because he is faithful. What is faith then? Faith is assurance in God's faithfulness. Are you not sure that God is faithful? 
Do you think God will change? Do you think God will alter anything he has said? Don't you know that God is able and God is faith? That's faith, that's faith. That one say you have faith because you have, you have assurance in God's faithfulness. And look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'm reading here from verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith. Let me explain that for you. I was read about um, Enoch. Had faith in God. We have read about Abel. He had faith in God. We have read about Abraham. He had faith in God. We have read about Noah. He had faith in God. We have read about Sarah. She had faith in God. We have read about Moses. He had faith in God. It says, we have him. Look at that assurance. We have him. Can you see there? I have him. Thank God. Thank God. Praise the Lord. You have it. We have him the same spirit of faith. You see the kind of faith we have, the attitude of faith we have, and the spirit of faith we have is not different from the faith that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. It's not different from the faith that Daniel had. It's not different than the faith from the faith that Paul or Peter had. That's why it says we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed, therefore have I spoken. He's saying my speech is connected with my faith. What I say is coming out of the heart of faith. He says I believed and therefore have I spoken. I personal, I personal. It's not just talking about somebody else. It's talking about you. You believe, say yes. You believe, say yes. Because you believe, therefore you speak. It says, we also believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. What's that saying about faith? Faith is unshakable confession from the heart. Faith is unshakable confession from the heart. When you open your mouth and you say something and you confess something that confession that's the faith that confession that's the faith you know that you are going over you know you are going to be well you know that everything will be all right you know that you are not going to have a loss in your life and because that's what you believe because of the faithfulness of god and because of the power of god you believe and therefore you speak and therefore you confess unshakable nobody will shake you out of this nothing will shake you out of it the wind may blow the sea may roar whatever happens you'll not be shaken out of this i'm reading now from matthew chapter 21 verse 22 matthew chapter 21 and i'm reading from verse 22 look at this all things whatsoever it cannot be wider than that. It cannot be deeper than that. cannot be higher than that. All things whatsoever. It, there is nothing else you are looking for that is not covered there. Are you asking for forgiveness? All things whatsoever. Are you asking for a provision? All things whatsoever. Are you asking for healing? All things whatsoever. Are you asking for a miracle? All things whatsoever. Are you asking for a child? All things whatsoever. Are you asking for anything you have lost to be restored unto you? All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. It's only to ask. It's only to ask. And you are given, you receive it because you ask. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. Believing ye shall receive. Ye shall receive. I want you to connect those words together. All things ye shall receive. Whatsoever ye shall receive, all things whatsoever ye shall ask, ye shall receive, all things ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Praise the Lord, you are a receiver tonight. You are a receiver tonight. It's going to come to you. You are going to have it in the mighty name of Jesus. It will be done. I said it will be done. I want you to look at something now in uh, Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and 21. In Romans chapter 4, he staggered not at the promise of God. He staggered not 
That's faith. That's faith. You don't stagger anymore. It's a man that is drunk that staggers. A man that, you know, he doesn't know where he is. He does not know how to make sense out of this. He doesn't know what to do. He's perplexed. He's shattered. He's, uh, he becomes a person that, you know, he does not know his way. That's what unbelief does. We panic when there's some belief, we fear. When there's some belief, we stagger. When there's some belief, but now there is faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But, look at this, look at this, look at this. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Look at verse 21. It says in verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded. He knows God cannot lie, therefore he's fully persuaded. He knows God is faithful, therefore he's fully persuaded. He knows that all things whatsoever he asks in prayer will be given, therefore he's fully persuaded. He knows that God is God and God cannot change, therefore he's fully persuaded. He knows this problem is bringing to God today. Other people have brought such problems to God and they have been delivered, therefore he's fully persuaded. And because of what you know about God, because of what you know that God cannot fail, isn't that why you are fully persuaded? And be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Able also to perform. What is faith? Faith is the peaceful expectation without a panic. Faith is resting. Faith is fully persuaded. Faith is not jolted. Faith is not worried. Faith is not anxious. Faith is not wondering what will happen. If this does not come to pass, if that does not come to pass, is fully persuaded, therefore is resting. I come to point number two now. In point number two, the exploits of quiet faith. Have you ever thought about this, that faith does not need to make a noise? Faith does not need to shout. There are times faith may shout, but faith really does not always shout, and faith does not always have to be sorrowful. Faith does not always have to cry. Faith does not always have to be sorrowful. There are some people that think they have not prayed well until they cry until they sigh, until they move, until they pinch or box themselves, until they knock their heads on the wall, until they roll on the ground. Faith does not always have to do that. There is what we call quiet faith. Can I show you in Exodus chapter 17, reading from verse 8. Exodus chapter 17, reading from verse 8 to verse 13. Then came Amalek and fought uh, with Israel in Rephidim. Then in verse 9, it says in verse 9, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand. I will not speak. I will stand. I will not shout. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses and Moses Aaron and all went up to the top of the hill. Verse 11 tells us, And it came to pass, it's going to come to pass, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed and when he let down his hand uh, Amalek prevailed. Look at that. Look at that. He held up his hand no shouting. No shouting. And as he held up his hand uh, Israel prevailed. As we hold up our hands unto the Lord. As we stretch our hand of faith. We don't have to shout and we don't have to you know, do any other thing. Quiet faith will work in your life even from this night in Jesus. If look at verse 12 there. In verse 12 it says, and Moses' hands were heavy, and they looked there, and he took his stone, and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and all stage up his sand, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady. 
no shouting, and his hands were steady. And there was no boxing of the hair, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Verse 13 tells us, and Joshua discomfited Amalek, and his people were the edge of the sun. Any shouting there? No, not at all. What kind of faith is that? It's a faith that gets victory without a voice. Victory without a voice. That victory is coming to you as you stay quietly there and you're expecting, and that expectancy is going to bring the result in your life. Exploits are going to happen tonight because there is a quiet faith that walks without a voice. We're looking at First Kings chapter 17. In First Kings chapter 17, and I'm reading from verse 8. First Kings chapter 17, we're looking at a verse 8. It says, and the word of the Lord came, saying, that came to Elijah. In verse 9, it says, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. At this time, Lord, is that all I'm going to have? A widow woman? A woman that needs help herself is the one that will sustain me all through this time of famine. Quiet faith does not question. Quiet faith does not argue. God knows what he's doing. And God can do, is able to do everything he has promised. Look at verse 10. We're told in verse 10, so he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And then in verse 11, it says, and as she was going, to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And in verse 12, look at the answer of the woman, and she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. That we may eat it and die. God, how can you send me to a woman, a widow, that is not even having expectation to live long, and she says she has the last meal? And she's going to cook, and she's going to dress this meal, and then she's going to eat, and both of them will die. But you know, Elijah had quiet faith. Elijah did not say, maybe I came to the wrong place. You are not in the wrong place. You are in the right place. Something good, something miraculous is going to happen to you tonight. Say amen. Quietly there, quietly there. It is going to happen. This is the exploit. And this is the power. And this is the explosion of quiet faith. Look at verse 13 there. In verse 13, Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me a little, make me thereof, a little cake force and bring it unto me. And after that, make for thee and for thy son. Here comes the word of prophecy in verse 14 unto you. It says, for thus says the Lord God. Once the Lord God of Israel has said it, once the Lord God, Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, has said it, once the Lord God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, has said it, thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until, until, underline that word, until, a miracle will come to you. The power of God will come in your life. And it is, this miracle will continue until, until, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And it happened just like that. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, it says, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Do you notice that the woman did not say anything after that prophecy? Anything contrary, any question, any argument, and any finding out how will that happen? After Elijah spoke the word, after you hear the word of prophecy coming into your life, you hear the proclamation, the declaration, your full persuasion, 
quiet faith begins to work. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Verse 16 tells us about the conclusion the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah, that it's happening in your life. And as it happens in your life, there's no argument and there's no gainsaying, there's no opposition, there is no quiet, there is no question, because this is the faith that brings provision without perspiration. Provision without perspiration. That's why we say it's a quiet faith. Do you know that it was, wasn't only for one day? One day, one week, one month, one year, two years, years passed, and every day the word was being fulfilled because of that provision without perspiration. Look at second, uh, look at second Kings chapter four. Second Kings chapter four, and we're reading from verse one. Second Kings chapter four, we're reading from verse one. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. Verse 2 now, in verse 2 it says, And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, The handmaid has not anything in the house. Can a miracle happen when there's nothing in the house? Can provision come when there's nothing in the house? Yet quiet faith, quiet faith will bring everything to pass. It says thy handmaid has not anything in the house except a pot of oil. See, a pot of oil. Here comes the directives now, verse 3, as to what to do. And in verse 3, then he said, go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Verse 4, it tells us in verse 4, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out, don't talk, pour out, don't shout, pour out, don't cry, pour out, don't uh, uh, perspire, pour out, don't argue, just pour out. You see, it is quiet faith that works, and that quiet faith without argument, that quiet faith without doubting is going to work, and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. In verse 5, that woman did exactly that, so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. No talking, no argument, and no questions to be asked. And they brought the vessels and she poured out. And she poured out just a little there and she kept on pouring and she kept on pouring and that thing was never exhausted. The power of God will never exhaust in your life. The provision of God will not exhaust in your life and the strength of the Lord will not exhaust in your life. Every good thing that you expect and as you are pouring out your life, you are pouring out your life into that vessel, into that vessel, the grace of God will not be exhausted. Enough. And she poured out. Then in verse 6 were two. So, in verse 6, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, your vessels will be full. I said your vessels will be full. When the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stage, the point I'm making for you here is that there's no argument. And there was no pain. There was no perspiration. There was no crying. There was no shedding of tears. Quiet faith will work. It will work in your life. Verse 7. In verse 7 we are told, and she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debts by the grace of God. For the prophecy of the word of God, all your debts will be paid. All the provision you need, everything will come to you. And leave thou and thy children 
of the rest. Can you see that? That sufficiency without a supplier. That sufficiency without a spouse. That sufficiency without another person being there to help her. And it is plenitude without palliative. Plenitude without palliative. There's nobody to give her anything at this time, but she had a little pot of oil. And the little pot of oil, through that, the miracle came. The miracle is coming to you, and it will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Quite faith, quite faith. We're looking at, um, we're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 5. This was a serious situation among the disciples, among the apostles, because Peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. In verse 6, it says, uh, in verse 6, that uh, this uh, time now, when Herod would have brought him forth, that he is to slay him, to finish him, the same, the same night Peter was sleeping uh, between two soldiers. He knew that uh, Herod was going to bring him forth the following day and was going to finish his life. It was going to kill him and yet Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7 here. It says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. All this time, Peter was not saying anything. All this time, the church was praying far away. And the church was not in the prison there. The church was far away and Peter was in the prison and he had quiet faith. Why did he have such kind of faith? Because the Lord had said, when you become old, then people will tie your hand and take you to the place you are not thinking of. And he wasn't old yet. And he stood on that word and he believed that word because of that quiet faith. That's why he slept and an angel appeared and smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise so quickly and his chains fell off from his hands the chains of bondage and the slave the chain of affliction and the chain of the enemy and the chain of the executioner will fall off from your hands and from your neck and from your feet in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 we're told, And the angel said unto him, Get thyself and bind on thy sandals. And, and so he did. And he says unto him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. You are following the Lord and you are going to go into freedom. And you are going to get your liberty again, total freedom and total liberty, even from tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. It says in verse 9, and he went out and he followed him and he wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision in verse 10. Verse 10 tells us, and when they were past the first and the second one, Watch. They came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Please understand, all through this time, Peter had said nothing. He only thought, and was only sleeping, and the angel came, and the miracle was performed. Your miracle is going to perform no argument. And there's no gain saying, and there's no opposition, and there's no questioning. While you're having that quiet faith in your heart, God is going to keep on walking. And he says, and they went out, and they passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Look at verse 11. It says in verse 11, and when Peter was calm to himself, everything was like, what's happening here? Everything was like, even though I'm not shouting, I'm not praying, I'm not crying, I'm not, you know, a kind of uh, making everybody to hear my voice, all the same, in the quietness of my environment, the miracle is happening. And the, when the miracle happened and the angel went back to heaven, when Peter 
was come to himself, he said, now I know. Tonight you will know. Now I know. In the quickness of environment there, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Look, look at this. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. They're saying, hey, we don't know what's happening to him now. He's all alone by himself. He's in self-isolation. We don't know what's going to happen. And they have negative expectation. Your quiet faith, my quiet faith, our quiet faith will turn everything around in your life in Jesus' name. It will happen. It will happen. That's what uh, we call, uh, that, that's the word of God. And it, uh, call, it's called the promise fulfilled for peaceful faith. The promise of God fulfilled for peaceful faith. Uh, let, me, let me just read one uh, verse of scripture. And uh, now, after all that, before I go to point number three, and it's in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. 2 Kings chapter 19, we're reading from verse 35, and see what happened here. 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, and it came to pass that night, this your night, and it came to pass that night, I said, this is your night, with quiet faith, without even you throwing any arrow or throwing any stone at anything. Your miracle is going to happen tonight, quietly, but definitely in Jesus' name. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and hundred first score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. They arose in the morning, they were all dead corpses. That supernatural sign while sleeping. Uh, Jehoshaphat was sleeping, Ezekiah was sleeping, all the people that were threatened by Shinakarim, they were sleeping, and these soldiers too, they were sleeping in the dead of the night. While they were sleeping, all their enemies were destroyed. While you're sleeping, while you forgot about the problem, and you relax in the Lord, you are prayed in the night, like tonight we're going to pray, and after that prayer, you go to sleep. Peter slept. And the miracle happened while he was sleeping. And these uh, people of God that the Assyrians were after, they were sleeping. And the Assyrians themselves were sleeping. Before they woke up in the morning, the miracle had come. There are exploits. There are miracles. There are signs and wonders when we have quiet faith. Uh, let, let me put it this way for you to connect it to what is happening now. This is special deliverance despite social distancing. Special deliverance despite social distancing. The word will come to you right there. And the expectation you have is going to be fulfilled. There is social distance and we cannot, we are not together now, but he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their oppressions, all their afflictions. Let's come now to point number three. Point number three. We're reading now from the word of God. And it's talking about our expectation with quality faith. Our expectation with quality faith. Can I assure you that this night, your expectation of the fulfillment of the promise of God is going to be fulfilled? Can I assure you that your expectation of the realization of the power of God in your life is going to be fulfilled tonight in Jesus' name? Let me hear a good, quiet amen there. It's done in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 62. In Psalm 62, we're reading from verse 5. Psalm 62, we're reading from verse 5. Our expectation with quality faith. It says, my soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. 
He never forgets his promise. He never fails and he never fails. And he's a God who cannot lie. He's a God when he says yes, nobody and no circumstance can say no. He says, my soul, wait thou upon God for my expectation is from him. Your expectation is realized tonight. It will be done in Jesus' name. I'm coming to Psalm 20. And we're reading from verse 1. Psalm 20, we're reading from verse 1. In Psalm 20, verse 1, it says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Did you say amen to that? Let me hear your amen. The Lord hear thee. You in particular, he will hear you. It will hear your family. It will hear the cry of the children. It will hear the petition that will bring before him tonight. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, Send help from the sanctuary and strength to thee out of Zion. Strength is coming to you. Tonight, help is coming to you. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, remember all thy offerings. He remembers all your offering. He remembers all the things you have done. He remembers the good you are doing and accept thy bond sacrifice. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, grant thee, grant thee according to thine own heart. What are you thinking about? What are you meditating on? It will grant you according to your own heart. Look at this. And fulfill all thy counsel. And fulfill all thy counsel. Verse 5 is wonderful. Just tremendous. It says, we will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Can you read the last line with me? One, two, three, go. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. So I want to read that again and make that personal. The Lord fulfill all my petitions. Instead of my, instead of thy, put our there. The Lord fulfill all our petitions. It's done tonight. It's done tonight. The expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. There will be no disappointment and you will not come to any confusion in Jesus' name. We will set up our banners. We will rejoice. We will give testimony because the Lord will fulfill all our expectation. Proverbs chapter 23, we're looking at verse 18. In verse 18 it says, For surely there is an end. Surely there is a destination. Surely there's an end of this problem. Surely, there's going to be an end of this pandemic. Surely, there's going to be an end of this pain. Surely, there's going to be an end of this plague. Surely, there is an end. There is an end. Look at your life now. Look around and see what is happening here now. Surely, certainly, without any shadow of doubt, there is going to be an end. An end has come to the problems you carry. An end has come to the load you carry. Surely there is an end and thine expectation. Whose expectation? And thine expectation. I say whose expectation? And thine uh, expectation shall not be cut off. Thine expectation shall not be cut off. It is done in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 24, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 24, reading from verse 14. Proverbs chapter 24, reading from verse 14. So shall the knowledge of the wisdom be unto thy soul. That is, now you have the knowledge of wisdom. And it will be unto your soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Thy expectation shall not be cut off. What are you expecting? Life? What are you expecting? Abundant life? What are you expecting? Joy? What are you expecting? Libration? What are you expecting? The removal of every curse out of your life, out of your family? What are you expecting? Children for the barren? What are you expecting? Healing and deliverance? What are you expecting? Strength and health? What are you expecting? Provision to meet all your needs and all the needs of the family? Hear the word of the Lord for you. Thy expectation 
expectation shall not be cut off. Thy expectation shall not be cut off. We're looking in at Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29. In Jeremiah chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, and we're reading from verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Do you know the Lord is thinking about you? Is he thinking about that condition? Is thinking about that situation? Is thinking about the perception you have and the, and the pain and the problem and the load and the burden on you? He's been thinking about you. And is going to solve the problem in your life even today. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord God, thoughts of peace, not of evil, Thoughts of peace, not of evil. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. No evil will come over you. No evil will come on your family. Brother, I see you smiling there. And I see the hope rising up in you. Now you know all these things are going to be over. And I proclaim in your life, no evil will happen to you. That's why. No evil will happen to her, that child. No evil will happen to him and to her and all the people, your loved ones. The Lord has been thinking about you, has been thinking about your family, has been thinking about the members of your local church. I've not heard of this, I've not heard of that. No evil shall call up or come upon any of them in Jesus' name because I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. Look at verse 12. It says in verse 12, And thou then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And I will hearken unto you. I will listen to you. I will listen to you. The Lord says he'll pay attention to your request. He'll pay attention to what you're asking. Then in verse 13, it says in verse 13, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. What do we do now in conclusion? In conclusion, all we're to do is to remember the Lord. Remember the Lord that he cannot fail. Remember the Lord that he cannot lie. Remember the Lord that is thinking about you. Remember the Lord that is going to answer your prayer. Look at Psalm 77 in conclusion. Psalm 77, verse 11. In Psalm 77, reading from verse 11, it says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Now, that's what you do. As we've heard about quickening faith, and we've heard about quiet faith, and we've heard about uh, quality faith, all we need to do now is to remember the Lord. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember thy wonders of old. What you've done in days gone by, what you've done for generations gone by, I will remember. Are you sick? Remember those who are sick in the past, he healed. Are you bound in any chain? Are you bound in any problem? Remember the people that were chained before and the Lord delivered them. Are you blind? Remember how you opened the eyes of the blind? Are you lame? Remember the wonders of old? How you made the lame and the blind to see and to rise up? Remember the works of old? He says, I will remember. Are you having uh, nothing to eat? Remember how he provided for those who are hungry? He says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. In verse 12 of that same chapter, in verse 12 I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Our discussion now in the family, husband and wife, our discussion now in the family, parents and children, our discussion now in the a, in a, in a community, neighbors together, is to talk of the doings of the Lord. To talk of what he has done and to meditate upon all the works of the Lord. Don't talk about, you know, the things over there, the things over there, and the other things happening. You remember the work of the Lord. You remember the wonders of the Lord. 
and you meditate on that and you talk of that. Look at verse 13. It says in verse 13, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Who is so great a God as my God? Who is so great a healer as our healer? Who is so great a deliverer as our deliverer? Who is so great a helper as our helper? Who is so great a creator as our creator? Who is so great a God as our God? And now in verse 14, in verse 14 it says, Thou at the God that doest wonders. You know, look, look at that word, doest. He doest wonders. He did and is doing and it will keep on doing wonders. And tonight, your family, and tonight while you are there, this is the God who is a faithful God and this is the God who is doing wonders. Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among thy people. Among thy people. In your family there, among thy people. In the corner there, among thy people. Over there, among thy people people, wherever you are, the Lord is sending the word of wonder and the rod of wonder and the statement of wonder and the decree of wonder unto you now because it's the God that doeth wonders and he has declared his strength among the people. It has come to you now. The miracle of God has come to you now with quickening faith with quiet faith, with quality faith, is going to work in your life right now. I rejoice with you. You have a testimony already. Why don't you rise up and just present your request, your petition before the Lord. And you remember, and you understand, he will fulfill all your petition. All your petition. Remember, you don't have any problem. All you need is faith in God. In times like this, in times like this, look at the wife. In times like this, look at your husband. In times like this, look at that child. In times like this, look at, you know, the provision. Look at the scantiness of, you know, everything. In times like this, look at how the strength of many is failing. In times like this, look at the enemy that is approaching and rushing at the people of God. In times like this, look at the shutdown. Look at the lockdown. In times like this, look at the sorrow and look at uh, the aspirations of the people of God in times like this all you need is faith in God have faith in God have faith in God quite faith and after we're praying tonight you go back uh, you go to your bed and you sleep have a good night's sleep while you're sleeping God is walking while you're sleeping God is walking and when you wake up tomorrow morning Look at everything, everything would have turned around because we're praying to God who answers prayer. We're praying to God who will fulfill all your petitions. We're praying to God who will answer all your prayers. Answer has now come. Brother, answer has now come. Sister, answer has now come. My young brother there, my young sister there, daughter, son, answer has now come. He puts a smile on your face. He puts joy in your heart because it's a God who is still doing wonders today. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. If you're sick, you lay your hand upon yourself anywhere you want to put your hand and with quiet expectation and with quiet faith, we know that today it is done. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you because once we have faith in you, all the problems are over, and the plagues are over, and the pandemic is over, and the pressure upon us is over. Lord, I bring my brother, I bring my sister, I bring every individual, I bring every household before you right now. All the needs in the family, I pray they'll be as a supernatural, miraculous provision right now in Jesus' name. Sickness cannot stand when you begin to work wonders and we consider your wonders and we consider your, uh, your power, we consider the exploits that you're doing. And I'm asking every sickness, whatever name, whatever description, 
whatever symptom, every sickness I command, be healed in Jesus' name. And any kind of uh, affliction that is trying to destroy the strength of your people, the body of your people, and the cells of your body there, I command right now, be healed and be delivered in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you send strength unto everyone. You send power to everyone. You send miracle to everyone. Lord, fulfill it on that brother, on that sister, on that child, on that daughter, on that son. Fulfill your miracle power. Promise in Jesus' name. You cannot lie. You cannot fail. You have said you'll do it. And we have unshakable faith. And we do not stagger at your promise. We're fully persuaded it is done. We're fully persuaded you have answered our prayer. We're fully persuaded all the petitions are answered. And I know in every household that has listened to this word, there is a miracle. In every household, there is a manifestation. In every household, everywhere, there is a demonstration of the power of God in Jesus' name. Deliverance everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Healing everywhere. The joy of answered prayer everywhere in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. We know it is done. Put testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. It is done. It's a God of wonders. It's done the wonder in your life. Share the testimonies with, uh, you know, our pastors, our leaders, and with everyone around. And tell your neighbors too. You can show them and you can tell them what you have learned today about, uh, you know, the quickening faith, about the quiet faith, and about the quality faith. And as you have got your miracle, they too, as you minister to them, they'll get their miracles too in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. And good night.